Good morning. So it's time to have a think about some of the chemistry in my Friday night curry. So first of all, let's whiz through the functional groups in the spice molecules that give my curry all of its flavour. Cinnamaldehyde, very simple, a benzene ring, an alkene and an aldehyde functional group. The other spices all have a methoxybenzene, an ether unit, and a hydroxybenzene, referred to as a phenol, on the left-hand end of the molecule. In gingerol, it's combined with a ketone unit, also in curcumin is a ketone unit, but in capsaicin, the carbonyl group is part of an amide functional group. In gingerol, we also have an alcohol. In curcumin, we have a kind of alcohol, but it's attached to an alkene, and we refer to that as an enol functional group. It's a special kind of functional group, which we'll meet again later in these videos. And curcumin has two normal alkenes as well, and capsaicin has a single alkene within the structure. In allicin, the functional groups are quite unusual. We have alkenes on either end, but the functional group in the middle is a cross between a disulfide, an SS linkage, and a sulfoxide. And many organic professors would struggle to name that functional group, but it's known as a thiosulfinate. So now we're going to think about menthol. And as I said in the first video, there are three chiral centres in menthol, each of which has four different groups attached. The first thing that we want to do is assign the chirality to these three carbon atoms so that we can label this molecule accurately. We'll start off in the top position and we'll apply our rules. If there's a CH3 coming forwards, there must be this hydrogen going backwards as the fourth bond. If we look for priorities, the lowest priority group attached to this carbon is this hydrogen. So we'll label that with a four. We now have one position away. We have a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. So, so far, these three substituents look the same. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens. This carbon to two hydrogens and a carbon. This carbon to two hydrogens and a carbon. So these two are higher priority than this one, which is attached to the three hydrogens. So this group is priority three. But there's no difference yet between these two substituents. If we come down to this position, we see once again we have carbon atoms, but this one is attached to an oxygen, and this one is attached to two hydrogens. So this side of the ring is higher priority than this side of the ring. So we'll label this side of the ring as priority one, this side as priority two. We then look at the molecule with the lowest priority group pointing away from us, and we go from one to two to three. It's a right-handed circle, so this stereocenter is R. We're now going to do the same on the second chiral centre in this molecule. Again, we'll show the hydrogen going backwards. The highest priority group now is this oxygen. It beats these carbons. So this we label as one. We then look at these two carbons. This has two hydrogens attached. This carbon has a carbon chain attached. So this carbon outranks this carbon. So we label this as priority two, this bond as priority three, and of course the hydrogen lowest atomic mass is priority four. We look at the molecule, the hydrogen is going away from us, so we can simply go from one to two to three, and what you'll see is this is going clockwise, it's a right-handed circle, so this is also an R stereocenter. Finally, we'll come to this third carbon centre here. If we look at this, it has this time the hydrogen coming towards us. We'll deal with this later. Now let's look at the functional groups attached. We have a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. They all look the same. This carbon is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon. This carbon is attached to an oxygen, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Oxygen has a higher atomic mass. This carbon is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. So, the oxygen substituted carbon will be the highest priority. This carbon, which has two carbons and a hydrogen attached, 
will outrank this carbon with two hydrogens and a carbon attached, because of course carbon has the higher atomic mass than hydrogen. So this is priority two, and this side is priority three, and the hydrogen is priority four. Now, it looks like we're going from 1 to 2 to 3 with a clockwise right-handed turn. But remember, the hydrogen, the lowest priority group, is pointing out of the board towards us. So we're really having to look at this molecule from the opposite side. So what might seem to us to be a clockwise turn from the other side would seem to be an anti-clockwise or S-type turn. So this stereocenter is S. So Labelling the stereochemistry of menthol, we have an RRS stereoisomer. What we're going to think about next is how many different stereoisomers of menthol could we have, and what is the relationship between them. The first stereoisomer we'll consider is the one where each of those chiral centres is inverted. The methyl group goes back instead of forwards. The OH goes back instead of forwards. And this group here comes forwards instead of back. This would be the SSR stereoisomer. Each stereocenter is inverted. And the relationship between these molecules is that they are mirror images. And if two compounds are mirror images, we refer to them as enantiomers of one another. Now we could also change just one of the chiral centres. Let's do that. The methyl group goes back, but the OH group still comes forwards, and this isopropyl group still points backwards. This would be the SRS stereoisomer. Now this is not a mirror image of this, or a mirror image of this. We've only changed one of the chiral centres, not all of them. So the relationship between these molecules is that they are stereoisomers of one another, but not mirror images. And we refer to these compounds as diastereomers, or diastereoisomers. We could draw the enantiomer of this compound by inverting each chiral centre. So we can make this one R, we could make this one S, and we could make this one R. Down up, up down, down up, mirror images. So this pair of stereoisomers is enantiomers, but this and this, for example, would again be diastereoisomers. They have different stereochemistry but they're not mirror images. In fact, as a general rule, for a compound with n stereocenters, there will be two to the power n possible stereoisomers. So with three stereocenters, we have two to the power three stereoisomers, two times two times two, eight stereoisomers of menthol. So we can list all the stereoisomers of menthol as follows. We can have RRR, an SSS, a pair of enantiomers. We can have RRS, an SSR, a pair of enantiomers. We can have RSR, an SRS, and we can have SRR, and we can have RSS. And taken together, that set of eight forms is all the possible combinations of three chiral centres. One thing you might like to think of as an extension problem is the three-dimensional shape of menthol. What is the actual shape of that molecule? And something we're going to explore in the next video is six-membered rings and what kind of shape, or what we as chemists call conformation, those molecules actually 